Over the past 10 years, I've lived in three different countries. The UK for a year, Ireland for eight, and now three months ago, my wife and I moved to Austria. She did a video about her reverse culture shock returning to Austria, and now it's my turn, having lived in recently in Ireland, originally from Barbados, and now what it's gonna be like living in this new place. It's actually not my first time in Austria. I've been here multiple times over the years. The first time I came here was actually nine years ago, but it's my first time actually living here. So this perspective is a bit more from being a visitor to actually what it's like living here. The number one culture shock is that this isn't an island. I know, it's obvious, there's no coastline. But the thing is that when you come from Barbados and Ireland, you're surrounded by the sea. When this actually first hit me was when it was setting up to rain. I didn't realize, wait a minute, I can't actually smell the rain. For those that live near a coastline, you know that you can pretty much smell the rain. You can smell it coming, the wind has a bit of a chill to it, but I stood here on the balcony and I just couldn't smell it. It, it I don't, it, it's crazy, you know, 30 something years of life and this is the first time I couldn't smell the rain. Also related to the lack of coast is actually drier. I really got used to Ireland where the air isn't so dry and there's kind of this kind of damp kind of wetness, but at the same time refreshing kind of moisture to the air. Over here it's summer and it's hitting over 30 degrees for several days in a row here now. You really feel the dryness in the back of your throat if you don't hydrate well enough. And one more thing on the landlocked country theme is the animals here. Now on islands, most islands that aren't that big, there's not a huge set of animals, you know, most animals or insects, are either native there or they're kind of brought across. Over here, I'm seeing animals, insects, well, Insects are animals, but insects that I've never seen before. We may be in a high rise apartment, but when these bugs come in, I have to be like, yo, wine, what, what is this? I've never seen this thing before. Is this something I need to get out of the house immediately? Or can it just chill there until, you know, a spider or something eats it up? Yeah, it's kind of weird because in Ireland, you don't get insects that much. Most of the year, it feels like it's too cold. So, you know, even if you're like seeing these kind of fruit fly things in the summer, those only appear for a couple of weeks and then they're, they're gone. Over here, you know, you get all sorts of animals. I think the wine even talked about stuff like wolves, you know, and all these creatures that sure I've read about them, haven't actually seen one in real life yet. But it's really interesting where if you're walking in the forest, you could encounter something like this in Ireland walking through there and I don't expect to see anything, barely even a mosquito. Now the most obvious culture shock is the language. Yes, there's no such language as Austrian, though when I first met uh, Wine, I did think, oh, what language does Austria speak? Austrians popped into my head, but then I wasn't stupid enough to actually say it. I was like, no, Sam, that's not a language, there's German. And now, as a tourist, there, as a tourist, you know, you might learn some German. I knew some German, some basic stuff. I could order food off a menu, just read it and be like, hey, I know what those ingredients are. I like that, please. There is a huge difference between being able to order something and being in a situation where your package is at a post office and then you need to go get it. I do not know yet the words for that interaction. I started off with a sentence, then after that I was like, Nope, I don't understand the rest of this conversation. Why not you take over here now? And that's the interesting thing is that it's Vienna, it's a big city, of course. There's the UN headquarters, one of them. And you know, you would think that there would be more English being spoken. And the truth is that, yeah, people know English. There are a lot of, especially the younger generation, that are bilingual. But generally the city doesn't have, you know, English signs and so on and so forth up regularly. So I've, I've gotten more used to it to just see the German signs and understand some German. But when you're here for the first set of times, you really gotta navigate without English. And I haven't been to much capital cities where the major language is not English, but it's a weird thing where you usually think, okay, it's a capital city. They're gonna speak more than one language here, but that isn't the vibe that's you know, I've got from here. Sure, people know English, but they're gonna be German first, which makes sense, of course. 
So when you come here, come to live, I think that's the first thing I need to do. Um, yeah, I am taking some time off to just learn the language. And yes, learn the people's language. Don't come to another country and not learn the language, especially if you're staying there long term. But even without it, there are interesting things that, you know, you're kind of missing. For example, the Olympics was a few weeks ago. Olympic coverage here was in fully German. And I was like, okay, this is new. I've always watched the Olympics in English. So even the sports that were covered is different based on country to country. So instead of, you know, from the Caribbean, there's a lot more folks on athletics. Now Austria has teams that, you know, do the rowing, equestria, and all sorts of these different sports. And I never really sat down and watched. And it was pretty cool to watch, be exposed to these new sports, watching them and hearing the technical details of what I could understand and the rest, you know, the wine had to explain. But even some of the nuances, even the TV. The interesting thing I did know is that TV shows over here, like Germany apparently has a huge dubbing industry. So you're not hearing a show like, let me pick a 90 show, like Malcolm in the Middle, for example. You're not hearing that in English and then there's German subtitles. No, that is in German. So even if you turn TV and you're trying to watch something, it is German. Even if you thought, hey, I just watch English old shows from the US and so on, and you know, they'll have German subtitles. That is not the case. If you really want to not be watching Netflix or something all the time and really watch what the local TV is, German as well is needed. But even past entertainment, it is it goes even deeper. You're so used to your own language, or in this case English, you know, supermarkets, Ireland, Barbados, no problem. I know what the ingredients are. But it's kind of strange for the first time you pick a bottle of something and we're like, I can't read what is in this bottle. It's like a mind-blowing thing where it's like, I've I've been doing this all my life. Why can I not understand this? It's crazy. And you know, I keep having this feeling over and over again. Even as I learn German, I the way I speak in English, like right here, how I'm speaking, I call it more of an entertainment way. Cause if I was supposed to speak like how I would have been taught at school, that's a more presenter type voice. That's not as fun for everyday interactions. But even translating that into this, you know, new language I'm learning, that's gonna take some time. So you start realizing, wait a minute, some of the subtleties and nuances that would have made your personality, you aren't going to be at the level yet to be able to communicate that in a new language. So that's going to be the thing for me for the next, you know, hopefully, you know, to get, get to that level, it's going to take a couple years. I may actually just need to find a different way of expressing myself using the German words that I do know in a year or two. That may not be the exact same as the you know, the English speaking personality, but hopefully will be as entertaining as I would like to be all the same. Now in videos about what the wine missed about Austria when we were living in Ireland, bread came up a lot. And you know, I know bread is great, but that's for being a tourist. I can't survive on bread alone. When I, when we would come over here, you know, it, it'd be all sorts of, you know, different breads and spreads and so on. Uh, well, vegetarian, I don't have, I don't eat schnitzel, but you know, can't just eat a schnitzel every day. But now that's where it comes into food. Now, the interesting thing is that, yeah, there's a lot of fresh food here. Yes, there's fresh food in Ireland, but you know, it's just like Barbados. A lot of these varieties of food need to be imported um, over here. There might actually be grown and you don't need to wait for the importation. So some stuff is a bit fresher and so on. But there's also the actual what's on the menu. There's a lot of seasonal menu. So I know um, when we came here, we went through the asparagus, asparagus season. Yeah, sorry, the German word for it is in my head, but I can't remember. It is asparagus, isn't it? Yes, sorry, you can see who doesn't eat much asparagus at all. But yeah, that was the season and we're now going into different seasons. So your menu, your Lifestyle of eating changes a bit with what season it is. That's the thing I definitely need to get used to because, you know, I really knew would feel that, but most of the time, you know, you're shopping, but you know, they'll they have their winter vegetables and so on, but you can still mostly get the standard stuff that you eat 
all the time. Similar thing in Barbados. We're always importing something, so it almost doesn't matter what sort of season it is. I can get that fruit or vegetable almost at any time. Of course, as a pescatarian in Ireland, I enjoyed salmon. So much salmon. We would just go, it'd be in a four pack, and it'd be delicious whether it's, you know, frozen or that sort of bit fresher. Yeah, without the coast over here, fish is not that cheap commodity as it was. It wasn't cheap in Ireland, but if you look at the prices here, yeah, it was seem cheap in comparison. So now I'm kind of faced with, okay, how do I change my diet? And the interesting thing is that going into stores, because um, of course there is Aldi here, known as Hofer here. I can't remember the history of why it's called Hofer here and not Aldi. But the interesting thing I found is that even in these sort of more budget supermarkets, there's a lot of like vegetarian and vegan food, more than I would have seen in Ireland. And I mean stuff that's kind of like just the ready-made, and I was talking about the burgers, but a version of it. I don't know what vegan schnitzel is all about. Not schnitzel, that's, an, that's another bread. Schnitzel well, is all about. Not to try it, because if the stuff is flavored like meat, I really like the taste of meat. So we're still figuring that out there. There's definitely more dairy in the diet. Thank goodness I'm not lactose intolerant. But yeah, this is a thing that we'll definitely need to figure out. As, you know, as a vegetarian, if you don't, pescatarian, if you don't have your fish, you know, that's going to be a little issue that you're going to have to change your diet for. Yeah, I think I'll just have to replace it with some tuna. <laughs> I like tuna, but not that much. Don't get me wrong, tuna's good. But there was one year in school, I must have been 14. I was just lazy and I was just like, yo, I'm going to just carry tuna to school, tuna sandwiches. I think I had tuna sandwiches for a year. I still eat tuna, but after that, yeah, I'm, I'm not eating it to that level ever again. And one of the final points about the food is the portion sizes. Not one of our, you know, hacks on a weekend that we would do in Ireland is that we found a couple of places that if we order takeout from, you know, the portions would be a big enough size that we could eat some for lunch and maybe some for dinner. So we didn't need to, you know, cook for an entire day. The interesting thing is that here, the portion sizes are just as much as you need. Even with takeout, they, they aren't sometimes some sizes that are like, oh, here's a big size, here's a smaller size. It's like, this is the size. This is how much food you should eat. And it is very useful. It's not a thing where you might feel like, oh man, I overate or something like that. But it's a bit annoying because then I have to go buy another meal and I can't do my hack of like, oh, I bought this meal. And now it's going to last me for two meals because almost everything is just just right. It's perfect for when you're going to eat out and you're, uh, you see something on the menu and you're trying to order it. It's cool because, hey, you can try it. It should be good enough. And it also leaves space for desserts, which, yeah, that's more of one of my favorite things. I'm still kind of going through um, different types of desserts that I haven't had, especially more seasonal types of different fruits are around, but I digress. Portion sizes, even for takeout, is not that, are not large enough that I can make two meals out of it. And so that's changing up my entire, you know, way I eat. But at the same time, this is also excellent because I don't need to think about so much of what the portion sizes are. And if I want to go to get something for lunch or dinner, I know, hey, I'll be able to finish everything on the plate without any worry at all. Next up on the list for me is relaxation. Relaxation in Austria kind of feels like a different sort of vibe. Yeah, there's not really a pub culture or anything like that, but there is a sense of just chill. From what I have seen, a lot of people will go to a, you know, a cafe, a restaurant, and, you know, they would finish their meal, they would do a bit of talking, but it's a lot of more like a quiet activity. As you sit and wait for your meal, there might be a little bit of chit chat, but it's mostly just there and sitting and enjoying the ambiance, the space, the quiet. Even after you finish your meal, you may just sit there, just taking the surroundings, especially in summer now that it's outside. And the volume is not very loud 
at all. And in some cases, we could hardly even hear what someone sitting close by was saying. Close by isn't the same thing like you would have in Dublin, for example. They're actually a good distance of space away. They don't, and they have more of the space here and they don't really like eating in the cramped corners. But even when it's, you know, the Sunday and you have your day of rest, you know, most stores are closed except those that have the license to open on Sunday, like the supermarkets and such at some train stations and the airport. Yeah, people would engage in more quiet activities. I mean sports or so on where they're, you know, like cycling or running. There are a lot of things where even after doing the sport, there's not a lot of talk. It's all very quiet. I find, even though there is some noise, you would find the noise level is something that they are very particular about. And you might get asked questions about, hey, did you find this place was quiet? You know, were you able to hear yourself? Think, not in those exact words, but that kind of vibe. I think that anywhere that has a sense of quiet to it is somewhere they would find relaxing. Um, even if it's in the park, you're in the park, you're sitting, you're having a ice cream, your lunch, very, very quiet and just taking in the atmosphere and vibe. This is totally different from how it might be in Barbados and Ireland where if people are having a good time, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear more noise and life and that, I, I kind of do like that more jovial spirit where I know Hey, there's noise here, there's laughter, people are having a good time. In Austria, it feels like, yeah, I just need to look at people's faces or uh, understand, okay, you're enjoying yourself, you're quiet, there's not a lot of noise going on here, but you are indeed having a good time. So the final culture shot for me, yeah, I'm still trying to figure this one out, it's not been that long, but it's clothes and fashion. The crazy thing is that, hey, you're in a Vienna, most livable city, you know, we're, we're, we're not too, too far from the center of town. You go through places like the Ringstrasse, beautiful place, you've got your gardens, different types of architecture, old buildings, and you know, you're walking through it and it feels like, oh man, I feel like I should be properly, you know, dressed, you know, nice dress shirt, tie, and, you know, look, look at your best. But um, no, no, that, that's not how it is for most parts that you seem to go. Everyone you dress casually, it's kind of crazy where you're going down the street and I'm seeing like, oh, there's a Cartier store there. There's, you know, Louis and all these other brand names. And you're just, you know, and there in your flip flops, just casually walking because it's not a fancy part of town. It is just town. It is just your city. You know, I've experienced before, it's like, okay, I'm walking past this, you know, high-end street, but it's on the way to the subway that I need to get home. I'm not dressing fancy to just, you know, walk by these places. Sure, it might be historical, but that's just what these part of the cities look like. I remember, you know, I was, one time we were out and I was just trying to, you know, we got hungry, going to this restaurant. It was an Italian restaurant. And the men especially, people were just in there wearing their graphics tees the cargo shorts, and I'm thinking, man, if I was going out to this place, I would feel like I need a butternut t-shirt, you know, have some sort of uh, longer pads on, feel like I need to dress up a bit, but ah, I mean, where their culture is just, this is what it looks like. This is how old it is. This is how fancy it looks. You know, you don't need to dress up for that sort of thing. And yeah, that's still a bit of a shock when I'm there ordering food and I'm like, man, did, did I really dress too much? I, I feel like I need to change my wardrobe. I have a lot of these kind of button up shirts as the autumn is coming. Yeah, I gotta, oh, I'm gonna be so glad to go at the hoodies I, after living in Ireland. I miss slash don't miss wearing the hoodies, but I'm waiting for a chilly temperature to get again, chilly temperature. Ah, I've been here already and I'm calling something like 20 degrees chilly. Sorry, once you adapt to somewhere, you adapt somewhere quickly. And I got back used to the warmer temperatures in no time. I think it took me like three weeks of being like, wow, 30 degrees is hot to be like, ah, no, I remember how this feel like the, the Caribbean jeans kicked right back in. Well, that's my list here for now for the culture shots. I, you know, we're still early here, so I know more and more will be appearing the more I actually get integrated more society. 
especially as I learned more German, I'm expecting to just be mind blown about the amount of like cues and different things that I'm actually missing until I have, you know, a better understanding of the language. But that's all for today, folks. This has been The Rum. Of course, like and subscribe. We're going to be talking a lot more of our experience here, moving from Ireland to Austria. Yeah, it's going to take a bit for us to get adjusted. I mean, you don't just live eight years in some place and then suddenly be like, yep, I, I know how to live in this new country. But until then, keep safe. Cheers from the rum and I'll hear you later. Tschüss. Yeah, tschüss. I speak German now.